This time last year, Lauren Parker was one of Australia's most promising triathletes. Supremely fit, her life was an exciting blur of international competition and full-time training. Then, a dreadful accident, which couldn't have been much worse. Lauren was paralysed. And she wasn't just broken physically, mentally, she could see no hope. But after months of misery, something changed. And I can barely believe what I'm about to say next. On Saturday, the remarkable Lauren Parker will be competing in the Commonwealth Games as a genuine gold medal contender in the para triathlon. The story of her inspiring reinvention with some mighty help from an unlikely friend will take your breath away. Lauren Parker's daily training drills start at sunrise at the Ocean Pool in Newcastle. Given she's had the year from hell, it's an incredible effort, drawing from the depths of a very strong-willed character. Can you believe what you've achieved? Did you think you'd be at but this level, Commonwealth Games? Certainly not. I didn't think I was going to get back into triathlon, let alone racing and this early and qualify for the Com Games. Growing up, Lauren Parker was a swim champion in the making. At 19, she turned to triathlons, travelling the world to elite events. On the circuit, she struck up a friendship with another triathlete, Brad Fernley, now her mentor, best mate, and since a dreadful accident, her saviour. So she was an elite athlete? From day dot. Yep, she already knew what it was like to win. Um, and then, yeah, she jumped into the triathlons and pretty much smoked it from day one. So Lauren and yep. the word champion. Yep, 100%. Fit together beautifully. 100%. Yep. Last April, this odd couple of the Ironman circuit, Brad, 57, and Lauren, half his age at 29, were training together for the Port Macquarie Ironman, their final hard session before the big race. It was 6am, a clear day. They were flying down the shoulder of the Pacific Highway, north of Newcastle. I was riding behind Brad and I asked what speed we were doing and, and he said 45k an hour and he said, that's great, you look really, you look really relaxed. At that moment, Brad heard two popping noises. It was Lauren's tyres bursting. All of a sudden, I just noticed that she veered left pretty dramatically and hit the guardrail full body. I heard a hit. When I got towards her, instantly, I just thought, this is not going to be a good day. And I said, I can't feel my legs. Why well, can't I feel my legs? Uh, I said, please tell me everything's OK. Please tell me everything is OK. And Brad, Brad couldn't say those words. He, he said, just be calm. Yeah, there's um, that noise that's with me nearly every night. Still, here we are nine months later, and that noise, horrific. Lauren was taken straight to surgery at Newcastle's John Hunter Hospital, where her mum, Anne, was waiting. After the operation, the surgeon came to see us. Mm. And the news wasn't good? No. No, no. no. it was just devastating. Mm. That, that night, my surgeon came to me and said, 
I have zero to one percent chance of ever walking again. And do you remember what you said or what was said in that room after the doctor told you <laughs> whether mum said something or you said something to the doc? Yeah, I said, certainly said something to the doc. I don't know if you want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear it. <laughs> I said, f*** off. <laughs> um, yeah, I just told him that. I, I, I mean, I asked him, is there any chance of um, something making me walk in, in the future? And he's pretty much slammed that down and said no. So, I, yeah, I kind of didn't want to talk to the surgeon. I bet. Lauren's smile disguises the agony of the months since. She wasted away, her weight plummeted. Then she got into the rehab unit's 15 metre hydro pool. Brad recorded the moment on his phone. You'll get there. That's the day that she realised that, wow, everything's taken away from me now. That utter devastation was also the turning point. Defying doctor's orders to slow down, Lauren took charge. After six months, she discharged herself from the rehab unit. She'd go back to the pool and back to triathlons in a wheelchair. She was determined to do that and she is a determined person. I don't think it would have surprised you. <laughs> no. In paratriathlons, the bike leg is replaced by this contraption, the hand cycle. The running leg is replaced by a wheelchair. Brad has put his building business on hold and is there for Lauren every session, every day. Some might say it's, a, it's an odd friendship. Do you see it that way? Yeah, yeah, I do, because we're, we're different. We give each other, you know, a lot. <laughs> when I'm with Brad, like, I'm, I'm happy. You know, he just makes me feel, feel, really, feel good and feel happy and uh, makes me laugh, so. Every time we're together, it's good. Lauren's first full paratriathlon since her accident is a World Cup event in Devonport, Tasmania. Suddenly, she's in a different world. She's up against her new rival, another Aussie, Emily Tapp, who's been racing for six years and is world champion in paratriathlon. She does well in the swim and the hand cycle, but in the wheelchair, she struggles. Emily, the world champ, speeds past her. Around the last turn for Lauren Parker, and then it's all the way to the finishing line. Second position today in this World Cup event. Second in her first full race, remarkable by any standard. But there needs to be much more training, especially in the wheelchair. Does your mind wander on long training runs now in the, in the chair and back to when you were an able-bodied athlete? I try to avoid that because I just start missing my legs. I'm only happy when I'm training and racing. Outside of that, life in a chair, what you have to deal with, yeah, people don't understand what, you know, spinal cord injuries actually do to a person. How would you sum up her life now? Sum up her life? Her life's shit. And I'm here to try and reduce that amount of shit. And if I can give her a little bit of help, guidance, make it a little bit better, then not as though it's my job, but at least I've helped her. Just that little bit, Pete. Hello, Lucas. Say hello, honey, Loza. Hello, Miss Len. Lauren says she trains so much she doesn't have time for a boyfriend. Her oldest friend, Hayley, now a new mum, helps put a smile on her face. Good to see you now. Three, two, one. Lovely smile. And now that sponsors are knocking on her door, 
life's not as lonely and hard as it was a few months back. Scratch the surface though, and the smile disappears again. I always have moments of darkness and people don't see that. But I try and cover up. So you wear a mask? Essentially. I'm not happy about being in a chair. Everything's hard getting around, let alone, you know, half your body not working. Being honest, truly in touch with herself, could have brought her down, but Lauren uses it to drive herself on. And she lives for days like this. Like a small boat on the ocean. The National Triathlon Championships on the Gold Coast. She's on the start line with her new arch rival, Emily Tapp. Lauren's mum and Hayley are here for the big day. Being the rookie in the para events, she loses time with the pit stops, but she improves a lot. Remember, this is just her second full race in para triathlon. This is Lauren Parker about to cross the line from Newcastle. She comes in second. Fantastic. Did you hear us roaring? Yeah. <laughs> Emily Tapp had won again, but the world champ says she knows Lauren's breathing down her neck and getting dangerously close to beating her. So you have great respect for what she's doing? 100%. I am in awe. <laughs> Completely. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2018 Australian paratriathlete team for the Commonwealth Games. Next Saturday, Lauren Parker races for her country at the Commonwealth Games and in many ways for herself. It'll be a showstopper. Emily Tapp is a competitor. What's your goal? What do you want to do? I want to beat her. You're a competitive person, aren't you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so less than a year, she goes from able-bodied professional triathlete to life crushing, you'll never walk again, to com games and potential win. Stay tuned, eh? Fingers crossed. <laughs> No, I've still got a lot of fire left in me.